The Laboratory for Financial Engineering is really meant to be a partnership between industry and academia. Uh, it's meant to support uh, models and uh, methods applied to uh, various kinds of financial challenges. Uh, and the reason that we have industry sponsors is because they are really struggling with the most important challenges today. Uh, so academics, uh, re research scientists, graduate students uh, are engaged in a variety of applications of mathematical methods to financial challenges uh, to really try to understand how it is that these tools can actually be applied to very concrete and practical settings. The, the area of my research is in quantitative finance. And uh, in the world of quantitative finance, uh, much of the theory that was developed was actually developed at MIT, uh, way before I got here. Uh, giants like Paul Samuelson, Bob Merton, Franco Modigliani, Myron Scholes, Fisher Black, Stu Myers, John Cox. These are individuals that really have made quantitative finance a reality. Uh, and so uh, the opportunity uh, to be at MIT is, in my view, a, a once in a lifetime chance to, to be part of uh, an extraordinary franchise that has developed into uh, something that I think is uh, world renowned at this point. If you look at all of the top financial institutions, they now recruit at MIT. You know, it used to be that it mattered who you knew rather than what you knew. Uh, and uh, the old boys network was much more important than the computer network. Well, all that's changed. Uh, now, uh, the graduates of MIT Caltech have an advantage over the graduates of Yale and Harvard. So I call it the revenge of the nerds. The adaptive markets hypothesis is really a pretty simple concept. It's the idea that financial markets are really part of our evolutionary adaptation to an otherwise hostile environment. So it applies the principles of evolutionary biology to uh, financial interactions uh, and uh, institutions. Uh, the adaptive markets hypothesis begins with the recognition that people are uh, self-interested, uh, but at the same time there are limits to their cognitive abilities. And so it really tries to draw out the dynamics of market interactions, recognizing that uh, we're all ruled by fear and greed, uh, but at the same time, we also have the ability to think ahead and to be able to plan for certain contingencies. So that confluence of rational deliberation coupled with very strong emotional reaction can give rise to some very peculiar market dynamics. And that's really something that economists have only recently begun to uh, study and, and to, to deal with. Well, the adaptive markets hypothesis really attempts to reconcile uh, the logical deliberations that people engage in with the kind of emotional reactions that are really unavoidable. And it's balancing those two and understanding how market conditions can actually change very rapidly in response to these kinds of shifts that really bring alive the kind of dynamics that we see in the marketplace today. Biomedical innovation has three unique characteristics that uh, really make it very challenging uh, to finance. Uh, the first is that it's very expensive. Any kind of drug development program uh, now is in the hundreds of millions of dollars for a single program. Second is that it's extraordinarily lengthy in duration. Typical drug development programs take anywhere from 10 to 20 years. And the third and probably the most difficult problem that we have to deal with is that they're very risky. So the probability that a particular drug development program succeeds is generally pretty small. You've got to do a lot of trials before you end up developing a successful drug. Those three characteristics really provide enormous challenges to the pharmaceutical industry as well as the biotechnology industry. And so we actually need a new way of thinking about financing these types of developments. And so this is where the financial crisis comes in. The financial crisis, in my view, is the equivalent of E equal MC squared for the financial industry. It is a proof of concept that demonstrates that with the right financial structure, or perhaps the wrong one in the case of the financial crisis, we can channel enormous amounts of resources to various different activities. And so if we imagine that cancer research is an important activity that society will benefit from, we may want to use some of the same tools that created the housing bubble to channel resources into that particular part of the, uh, uh, the industry. 
I've spoken to a number of industry experts that seem to think that this could be uh, a workable idea. Uh, we're still in the midst of developing it and there are a number of different projects that have come out of the original research that we've been doing on this, uh, but we're hopeful that this could actually give the industry a much needed boost in terms of resources uh, and new ways of thinking about risk and return. The industries that we're focusing on include pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, medical devices, uh, and also, as importantly, academia uh, and government. So, for example, the FDA plays a very big role in addressing some of these concerns, as well as NIH and, in particular, the National Cancer Institute. So my work at CSAIL is very much related to the work of the Laboratory for Financial Engineering, but the focus is probably more on the technology side. Uh, one of the initiatives that we've been working on at CSAIL is the Big Data Initiative. Uh, and that involves attacking very large-scale data sets with new tools, tools that currently don't exist uh, in other disciplines. Uh, for example, statistical methods for learning relationships among very large data sets uh, really goes beyond the traditional econometrics framework that economists usually use. Uh, also, being able to manage large data sets, even being able to put a large data set in a simple database, is not something that you can do with the standard kinds of tools. You really need cutting-edge research to be able to engage in those kinds of activities. And that's really what CSAIL principal investigators pioneered over the last few years. Big data is, is a phenomenon that has cut across all sorts of disciplines. It's really the challenge of dealing with massive amounts of data that is being collected now because one, storage is cheap, and two, uh, we're now globally connected. So in every area that you look, whether it's economics, finance, biology, physics, we're collecting so much data and it's very hard to deal with them because uh, it's really overwhelming the amount of information that we're being overloaded with. So what we require is a new approach to dealing with these issues, these challenges. And the new approaches have to do with new statistical methods, new computational methods, new visualization methods to try to make sense of this enormous wealth of information that we have at our disposal.